I'm Grazia Aleppo, Professor of Medicine in the Division of Endocrinology and Medical Director of the Diabetes Education Program at Northwestern Medicine. Technology has got very far ahead in diabetes in the last 10 years. It's been wonderful to see how much progress we've seen with uh, continuous glucose monitoring, with insulin pumps, and with hyperclose loops systems. CGM made really the big difference in the last 10 years because people before were just relying on the glucose meter, checking their blood glucose and seeing just a few points throughout the day, but the CGM gives you a whole 24 hours and you can see the direction of the glucose, where they're coming, where they are, and where they're going, give patients a fantastic amount of information. They had not that before. When you add those together with the insulin pump therapy, you had this perfect system called the hybrid closed loop that combines the two, and that's so exciting right now. First of all, the CGM advance. We're talking about a tool that was primitive 10 years ago, and now this tool is so accurate that people can use it to dose insulin. They don't have to check the glucose again to confirm. The hybrid closed loop or artificial pancreas have three pieces. The insulin pump that delivers the insulin, the CGM, and an algorithm. So how does it work? CGM senses the values of the glucose in the interstitial fluids, sends a signal to the algorithm that decides how to manipulate the insulin delivery based on the direction of the CGM values. So together, they make the artificial pancreas. Now, we have different levels of um, artificial pancreas, if you will. Some of them are more base, so they have an insulin delivery that is suspended with a threshold. When the sensor reaches the threshold, the pump suspends the delivery up to two hours. These are the older type, I should say. Now we have modern types, and these are the ones where the CGM controls the basal delivery. It includes modulation up and down of the levels based on the CGM rate of change. Now, the beautiful thing is that we also have pumps that advance this to automatic correction. The one that is the most advanced in the United States right now can give the insulin increasing, decreasing, but also can give a correction bolus when there is a threshold about, above 180 milligram per deciliter. So that can also help the patient to stay much more in the time and range that we now consider standard again between 70 and 180 milligram per deciliter. So you see, all these tools help the patient to do better and have less fluctuation. The comments from patients are really incredible. They say to me, this is a game changer. And they say, oh my goodness, I never thought I could be so much more calm about my diabetes. So think about my diabetes less. So the next step for every closed loop is going to be full automation. There are some studies that are going on with trying to minimize hypoglycemia and exercise with these tools. And so when you have an hybrid closed loop system, as good as the algorithm can be, it doesn't take into account the reaction of the patient with glucose when they go exercising. So there's a lot of study going on on understanding how to optimize exercise in these kinds of systems. The one thing that needs to be still addressed and that is how to automate boluses for meals. So now we're trying to see whether faster insulin that are becoming available can actually overcome this challenge, or how the algorithm can read earlier, or how we can perhaps announce a meal without taking an actual dose of insulin. If all these strategies will be able to succeed in automating the bolus, they will be the fully automated insulin delivery. Right now, we have tools for just about everybody. We have tools for people with type one and type two. And we have our mini itty bitty patch pumps they just use the abdomen and they just give insulin for the meals alone. So people like to carry all this paraphernalia with them to do all these measurements. They just click a button very discreetly. So that's one advance. They also have insulin pens that are smart pens with Bluetooth capability with an app on a phone where there's a calculator that tells you, you know, there should be a dose of insulin for the amount of food that you're eating, for the size of meal you're eating. So all these calculators will help the patient to do better and try to avoid taking too much or too little and avoid the fluctuations. And of course, we have more and more of these insulin pumps that are going to be um, with CGM. One time has a pump with the sensor and then a pen with the sensor to try to have the patient have choices whether they're going to be attached to the pump or not. And so all these things really are going to be changing in the next few years. So when I think about CGM or hybrid closed loop, I think that the patient for the first time can be in control of their own diabetes. And that to me is huge. In the past, there was this feeling of doom. I have to go to my doctor. They don't have to, they know already what the glucose levels are. They can see it on their phone every moment of the day. They don't have to wait six months for me to say, oh, let's change a little bit. They do it on their own. For them to have a way to control them, to just see themselves, that is huge, huge, mentally and for their health. I believe that the clinicians have become the limiting step of 
making this technology more advanced available to the patients. Because, you know, we need to educate ourselves. There are so many ways, so many tools, publications, webinars, lectures, you name it, to engage the provider to learn about these tools and so they can be ready to offer to their patients in primary care everywhere. And that to me is the true success of technology when everybody's feeling comfortable prescribing it and understanding it. I've been involved in the major clinical trials on CGM therapy and in fact I was honored to be the protocol chair of the study that, that allowed the FDA to approve the CGM therapy to be used without the need of checking the glucose. So that was a major step. We are also doing a lot of studies on CGM for type 1, type 2 patients, and we are working on some pivotal trials for artificial pancreas models that will be available hopefully soon. I like to combine my research in technology and the application of the research to the patient, because research without application is just research. When you can translate what happens with the clinical trials and put it into the patient's hands, that is truly the accomplishment of somebody in my position.